Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We don't need to do the intro part because we're not doing a full album here. Uh, we are here to listen to some more Metallica today. So the entire crew has been gathered, all three of us. But we're going to start this video off slightly differently because I have a couple things I want to discuss first before we get to Metallica. First thing is I want to open my beverage because I'm thirsty. So we're going to skip right to the awesome and open our beverages so I can take a drink. Did you already open yours? I didn't get a fancy color like you did. Yeah, but I gave you more than I have, see? Oh, okay. It reminds me of my youth. Mm. Regular Mountain Dew. Mm. I haven't Matches had that in my a long shirt. time. We, yep. we always used to say after football practice, the best thing after football practice was just a cold can of regular Mountain Dew. Um, so first thing I have to say is with the last Metallica video we did, which was Death Magnetic, we did a premiere for the very first time. And I just want to thank everybody who watched the premiere. It was so cool. It was so fun. I should have been there, and I will be for the next one. Right, you said you will, which I want to try to do it for this video. But I, I want to say right away, if anybody, no one should ever, under any circumstances, feel guilty that they couldn't be there when we're premiering a video. I promise you, they're you not worth it. You feel a little bit guilty. <laughs> they're, they're not worth it. However, I you know, sat there and live commented that thing, like, almost the entire time. I was there the entire time, except for Four when hours. I went to grab my food. Four hours. It was three hours. And 50 minutes or whatever. Which are really impressive. And some of you stayed there the whole the whole time. time. And that KDM or whatever guy, he was like 25 minutes behind. I know. That was so really long. funny. And he so was he's commenting like, oh, so oh, hard. You're getting, you're getting to the part that <laughs> I wanted to awesome. hear. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and which was Poor great. Son and, of a bitch. and his comments <laughs> were some of the best ones for sure. But it was funny because we had gotten past the point where Chris, people loved it when we were listening to the actual CD version of Death Magnetic, and Chris and I were freaking out. And when he got to that part, he was like, I'm there. I'm to that part. <laughs> it was so, great. so I just want to say thank you to everybody who showed up for that. If you do see a commenter that's present, Chris, I made you a monitor moderator immediately when you got in. Yep. I, don't, I don't know if it said that, but I made him a moderator the moment he stepped in. So his name would be like a different color. If for nothing else, did you have to b block anyone or ban anyone the whole time? No, I didn't block or ban anyone. I, I timed out one person who just kept spamming something. Yeah, and that's not cool. Yeah. Like, let everybody have a chance to talk or pay us, and you can get your comments mm -hmm. stuck up there longer. Well, I didn't say that. Just pay. I would never say pay me to know we'll see your comment. But That's why I'm here. But uh, I did that once to someone, and I just timed them out for I don't know how long it times them out. But It was so much fun for those guys. It was, little, it was amazing. There was like 400 people there the whole time. I yeah. was mind blown. People hopped Insane. in and hopped out. And I did, it, I did it in the evening kind of here where we live in the middle of the United States, which is central time zone. And there were a lot of people with us from Europe. And so those people are total troopers who were probably there at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, <sighs> that is amazing. And there were people who were saying, I just can't stay up and watch this anymore. And I was just like, the video will be here later. Watch it later. You can watch the chat replay. You, you know, for sure. You can watch the chat replay. So just like, thank wow. you very much, everyone that did that. That's nuts. For the first time, I understand what it means when I see all these people that I watch on YouTube talking about their community. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, this is what they mean when they're talking about their community, because I will totally say right now, like I am terrible with names. I'm terrible with names and faces. I could see I see people. I've lived in the town that I've the, the town of 300 people that I've lived in my whole life. I don't know the names of the people who live there. You know, I, it's the same 300 people that I've been living with for 36 years. I don't know the names of a lot of the people. I know them by sight. If they had a flat tire, I'd stop and help them on the road. I'd help them do whatever they needed, but I don't know their names. So, like, I just want to say, don't expect me to, like, start knowing people <laughs> because I probably will never get to that stage where I know people. But I was seeing the same people, com the people who were commenting a lot on that premiere have been leaving comments on all the videos I've posted since and then. The polls I and see them do the else. poll, everything. Yes, we should talk about the poll too. So, like, I just wanted to shout that out and tell everyone thank you very much for doing that. I want to try to do premieres for the big videos from now on. Um, we'll see. So, speaking of the poll, I want to bring that up. I'm glad you brought that up because I, um, 
Hold on. I might have to cut some of this out because it'll take me a minute to get there, but I'm glad you brought that up. I had a lot of fun talking to you guys. It was really cool. We need to do that more. I have that thing. My It just says Present Chris on YouTube. My channel name is presentchris.com. D-O-T-C-O-M. Um, I made it in a hurry. I made that account as that video That's was cool. starting to premiere. Um, so you guys can tag me or whatever. I will probably respond to you in comments. That is the account I'm leaving open on my phone now. So whenever I go to YouTube... I get the notifications and stuff for there. So if you want to talk to me, you can always talk to Patrick. You know how to get to him. For sure. But and and I, I I take screenshots of comments that I like or that I think are worth sharing with them. And I send it to them in our messages all the time. So, And I will also say, this is kind of a bummer to me, but it has gotten to the point where I just, I literally cannot look at all the comments anymore. I get just too many. Every single time I like shut my phone off and turn it back on, even if it's 20 seconds later, YouTube is like a new comment, right? They like slowly Mm. feed me new things. And so I look at those and then I'll go to YouTube and the most it'll say, you know, is nine notifications. That's the most notifications it will say. I'll go through stuff. I'll scroll down for a while till I start seeing stuff that I've already seen. But like, it's impossible. I can't. I can't. I can't comment directly on everybody. So, no, if I thumbs up your video, I read it for sure and saw it. And if I obviously if I comment back, I had something to say to it. If I just thumbs up your video, it means I saw it and I liked it. If I see your video or your your comment, if I see your comment and I don't <laughs> like it or I I whatever, I just won't do anything. So then you won't know. So, <laughs> but okay, I posted a poll a while ago if anyone wasn't familiar and hasn't seen the poll. Um we have 794 votes, which is amazing because I only have 23 or t- I have 29, 2,990 f- or 500. 2, it'll be 3,000. by the time it'll, video comes No, out. it won't be. It'll well, when this video Nears comes out, no difference. 3, yeah. When, <laughs> when this video will be close, it'll probably get to 3,000 soon. Um, <clears throat> but, but it's pretty nice that we had 794 people vote. And the question was, which band would you be most excited to see us do a reaction to? Knowing that we're going to do two songs from each of these bands in a video on my channel sometime relatively soon. So the bands were Iron Maiden, Slayer, Judas Priest, Megadeth, and Pantera. And it was really crazy because even from, from about 200 all the way up to 794, the percentages were almost identical. Yes, It's absolutely wow. incredible to me how they stayed the same. People just really spread out their votes. So Iron Maiden... I'm going to call this poll closed. (laughs) Iron Maiden had 21% of the votes. Slayer had 10, which shocked me. I thought that they would have way more. Judas Priest had 6% of the votes. Megadeth had 33%. Pantera, 31. Mm. So that tells me people are by far the most excited for us to listen to Pantera and Megadeth. And it kind of went back and forth a little bit there. But Mm -hmm. for the most part, Megadeth stayed on top. And I know your response to that was... Why? <laughs> You've already we've already listened to all the best Megadeth by listening to most of the Metallica records. <laughs> hey, there's a hot take. Do you do you think it's just because like Megadeth is like the most similar band to Metallica? I don't think that they're the most similar band to Metallica. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But okay. even the Stain wishes. I don't. Were. I guess I just assume that I am. I will listen when we do it. I have decided that I am going to listen with an open mind. And I'm going to wipe the fact from my brain that I just do not like Dave Mustaine. Okay. Okay. I, I don't. I like. So I, I, we're going to listen to it. And I'm going to tell you whether I think the production is good. And I'm going to tell you whether I think the songs are good. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not my just. My birthday go, uh, and Christmas present will be hearing Patrick listen to Sweating Bullets. <laughs> Hello, me. You keep me mentioning that song. You keep <laughs> mentioning Sweating Bullets to that, me. Because that. I don't even know what that song is, really. <laughs> But like that part, like I know what I know. I've seen the video for that part. Like yep. that part is like ingrained in my brain. It's just peace cells is what I always get stuck in my head because my little brother listened to that tape a bajillion times, and I think about peace cells. I've got some. I mean, I can think of several Megadeth songs that are just like legit. Like the system has failed. That whole album is awesome. Like, I'm I'm here for that. So, but man, Dave Mustaine sure is a piece of work he is, he is a piece it, of work it, it's funny too because if you would have asked me which band of all those that i was excited to listen to in order i would have listed them iron maiden one slayer two 
then Pantera, then Megadeth, then Judas Priest. Also, I noticed on the comments of that poll, there were a lot of people talking about the Slayer production faux pas. Mm. I mm. I am not exactly sure what they're talking about. Okay. Do, I have, do I, the early I, Slayer records sound like modern metal? No. Did Rick Rubin ruin them? I also don't think so. I love... Um, Rain and Blood. Rain and Blood, And right. South of Heaven. Like, Interesting. Love it. Seasons in the Abyss. Great. Love it. Mm-hmm. Do they sound fantastic? No, but the music is so freaking awesome. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> shoot, I just had something else I was going to say. But only 10% for Slayer? Come on, people. I thought for sure that Slayer would be way higher, but I guess not. I don't know. And the more I learn about Metallica, the more I'm like, they're not... Like, to me, Slayer is like a metal metal band. Right, like screaming heavy metal, like metal band. You might be surprised, but yeah, okay. maybe and totally maybe yes. Yeah. But like uh, that's what I thought Metallica was too. And the more we listen to Metallica, the more I'm like, n- n- sometimes they're a metal band. No. Sometimes a lot of times they're a rock band. <laughs> so um, there, Metallica is a really good gateway band. That mm. is that is true. N- yes, for sure. Yes, they're kind of like Baby's first metal band. You know. I don't know if I go that. I far. could. I could understand that. I could see, but right, but and not I, too far off. Yeah, yeah. I, that. And as I've said before too in our videos, I think to me personally, Load and Reload were a bigger influence on the bands that are important to me than like Ride and Master were to the bands that probably were important to you. You know yes, what I mean? So true. like for me, when we got to Load and Reload, that was when my mind was blown because I was like, oh, here I now I hear the influence in the music that I grew up with a little bit more. You know, I think a lot of the people that comment on stuff were of that same mm. thing, and even about Death Magnetic, which Death Magnetic is so good, but mm. like it was really surprising to me that people are willing to say on the internet that it's their favorite Metallica album. Yeah. I said some very complimentary things about <laughs> Death Magnetic when it came out to some big Metallica fans that are 10 years older than I am. And mm, I got yeah, some. Never get away with I that. got some death glares, <laughs> and I just shut up. And I, yeah. yeah. But I mean, because I said that yeah. all nightmare long might be one of my top favorite, top ten favorite Metallica songs. Mm-hmm. And I got some death glares, and I said, okay, I'm done. We, we you seen through Bud Bud Light at you, and <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually almost exactly what how. It... <laughs> <laughs> we, so we did get some good comments though that were agreeing with me, saying that they thought that the whole Death Magnetic album is basically just riff after riff after riff after riff, too many riffs nope. contained within each song. Doesn't but, exist. But but that's just you know different people's opinions. It's like oh. too much money. Okay, so. I wanted to start this Girl video. Girl too pretty, your car too fast. <laughs> too many friends. I, I, wa- <laughs> I was doing a song, but okay. I like it. I like it. Girl, I thought you were just listing stuff. No, Girl it, too pretty, it, car too fast. Yeah, there, uh, <laughs> no matter what I've say or done, there's no such thing as too much fun. <laughs> You guys, it's a country song. It's a pop country song. I forget who sings it, but it rips. Know. So yeah. I love it, Chris. Okay. I love you, Chris. Okay, <laughs> okay so I, this is not how I wanted this video to go, though. I wanted to start this video out on a more serious and somber note because I had a bad day today and I was pissed and I wanted the Metallica listeners to, day died. to feel to feel my anger and rage. They're right? not going to. They don't give a crap, probably. They don't. They're <laughs> happy. They're happy about this. Especially because you're. Mad. it's all over with now. Like, you're not even presenting a rage to them now. No, I'm I will be, though, in a it. second. So okay. here's what happened to me today. So people who watched our Death Magnetic video may remember that we did a nice little section at the beginning where I had an unboxing moment, right? Where I took out my Seven Dust CD and I took out my Orbit Culture CD. And then in the comments, everyone, in the comments, everyone was like, like, oh, Orbit Culture is so good. And I'm like, well, they were like, what would you rate a Patrick out of one to 10? And I said, two. And people got a little upset with me. <laughs> but hey, my proof is in the pudding in the video. You can go watch it on my channel. My Orbit Culture uh, descent reaction is up right now. Go check that out if you want to hear my thoughts and listen to the album along with me. A mashed potato with a kick drum on top of it. That's how I explain that, uh, that album sound. <laughs> but the other CD that I got and pulled out of that case was the Grace Potter album. And so... Three days ago, I or two days ago, whatever, it doesn't matter. I recorded my finally got around to recording my Grace Potter reaction. And oh, no. in that reaction, a thing happened 
that I have been waiting and wanting to happen since I started doing reactions on this channel. And it was a big moment, a big moment. And it was such a moment that I had to stop. I just, I okay, had wait. to stop and walk away. I actually had some <laughs> physical afflictions from what happened. And so I was so excited to share this video with everybody. And I uploaded it this morning, blocked worldwide, blocked. right? And so I'm like, oh, why? And so, okay, I did my thing that I do where I replace the audio with of the video with new audio track that has no music in it, right? Re-uploaded the video, blocked worldwide because of the bleed from the headphones. Wow. Utter trash. Utter wow. bull sh to the That's maximum impressive. level. That's and dark. so... And so there won't be any music in the video, which is really upsetting and, and frustrating to me because I want people to be able to enjoy the video. I'm going to have to probably now put some ridiculous sounding gate on my track so that there's just plain ass silence when I'm sitting there wow. listening to the songs. You know, I could edit it in such a way that like when I'm talking, there's nothing and maybe that would be allowed to be uploaded. Anyway, this is a travesty, and I wouldn't I wouldn't care as much if it was any old album. But because this crazy moment happened in the video, that moment has to be available for people to see. It has to be. And so I'm going to try to cut that specific moment out of the video and upload it as a separate video. So if you see any sort of Grace Potter thing on my channel over the next couple weeks, please just click on it and watch it. I'm going to try to get the whole video uploaded so that you can watch it somehow and like maybe sync the audio up with me. I know it's a huge bummer. And I was hoping that since Grace Potter is not like as huge as Olivia Rodrigo or Taylor Swift or anything like that, she's not even in the same stratosphere as those people in terms of popularity. Although she's way better than those artists by miles and miles. The, the, you know, there's just nothing I can do. There's no... There's no no music in the video. I don't know what's going to end up happening. So I just want to apologize to everybody. What I want to say, trust me, you want to go watch the Grace Potter reaction when it, you see it when it comes out. Whether it's the short video of me just, you know, whatever. If I have to, like, you know, put X's across Grace Potter's pictures in the video to get the stupid thing uploaded, I will do it. But... Just be aware that that's going to be something that's going to be coming out on my channel. Trust me, you want to experience it with me. And I don't want to say more because you guys got mad at me last time for giving away my sort of secrets. So I'm really bummed, I mean, really bummed that it happened this way. But I I'm trust curious. me, no matter what happens, it's going to be it's a, it's the at least that section of the video is worth watching. And like I said, if I cut that section out and just upload it as its own thing, trust me, it's worth watching. Patrick wouldn't even tell me what... Off camera, Patrick wouldn't even tell me what happened. No. It's, wow. He's being that I can't wait to find so out I'm what So I'm going to have to watch it on the channel. Yep. I'll have to go subscribe <clears throat> now. Now, to something that is very <clears throat> exciting. Oh, we have more unboxing. We do. We should just start titling these unboxing videos. And the, the cool thing about this is, very excited about what's in here. This is something I've been looking for for very long. Is it a vinyl record? Well, yes, it's a vinyl record. <laughs> it could, hey, it could be a laser disc. It could be a laser disc. Because laser that would disc, be cool. for anybody that doesn't know, laser discs are the same size as a record. It's just 12 inches by 12 inches. So you can buy a laser disc, like, for example... What you, I want you only have to describe a circle using one dimension. You don't have to say twelve inches by twelve inches. No, I mean the artwork. Oh. The artwork for it is the same as the artwork for a vinyl. So, like for example, one of my favorite movies of all time, I have the laser disc down here, is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, right, with Kevin Costner. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. I bought the laser disc. I can put it on my wall behind me, and you know how much the soundtrack to the Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves costs? Like seventy-five bucks. You know how much the laser disc cost? Three dollars. Dollar? Yeah. <laughs> Three bucks. Now, don't go online thinking you can buy the laser discs for all the Godzilla movies really cheap. Because eh, oh boy, nope. that ain't gonna happen. Nope. Those suckers are collectibles. But the artwork is just oh, so beautiful. So it's still probably it, which don't even bother looking up Godzilla movie soundtracks on vinyl. Chris, I heard your doorbell. 
You did. Okay. All right. You go. I'll open the package, but I'll save the reveal for when you get back here. He wasn't listening. Yeah, that's all right. All right. So. We have a knife and everything. I did bring it. You were, you, were you wondering late, earlier why I had this here? No. Were you afraid I was going to stick you? Um, no. <laughs> Good. I wouldn't stick you. Just... For the record, I wouldn't stick any of you. I won't go that far. He's unboxing it very carefully. If you can't see clearly on the screen. But you Unless can. you're a fan of season eight of Game of Thrones. I have no mercy. Oh boy, this was home packaged. There's a there's a uh, Hello Fresh box inside okay, of this I'll, record I'll wait box. Till, I'll wait till Gris gets back. Can we show the Hello Fresh packaging though? Mm-hmm. That's fun. This video is not sponsored, but we're opening Probably up. shouldn't show that label. Who cares? They put it in the box. Yeah, but it's inside the box. There's nowhere on here that says don't show on YouTube. They though. mailed it to a stranger. They did. Looking forward to seeing what's in the box. It's just HelloFresh packaging. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Scan the barcode get, now for free did album Did you get download. scammed? No. We, we don't know yet, but probably I'm, not. I'm so excited for this. You guys have no idea. Any unboxings I've ever done on my channel before pale in comparison to this. Chris Parker, eyes up here to see the glorious unboxing. I'm ready. What was that box? You did this. You boxed this up this way. You did this. I did not. Oh, it's just a blank piece of cardboard. Are you guys ready? Yes. Sure. Ooh, oh, the oh, best that's one. Sort of fun. Not the best one, you jerk. But, nope, uh, that's the best one. But yes, this is. Sometimes I always look for a little note, you know, like a thank you for purchasing from me or whatever. So I have been looking for this vinyl forever. This is actually better than I thought it was going to be. See, I have I have seen this in a store once. It was it was 30 bucks and it was too much for me to spend on it, 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. And the copy that I saw, it was a it was Oh, see this is Coke bottle clear with yellow streaks. They made a version that was Coke bottle clear with green with like there was green Coke Coke bottle oh, so the, green. Oh, the, the album itself is Coke bottle clear? Yeah, the, the album itself is clear with yellow cool. yellow streaks are on it. Are you going to open it up? Ever? I like that a lot. Clear albums are I cool. I think I shit. will open it just because, um, oh, I guess if you're saying I'm if I'm ever going to open it up, I could just open it up now. Oh, that wasn't what I was going to say. I didn't think that you were ever going to open it. I thought you were just going to leave it in a No, yes, I will open it because to me, this is an important enough album. I want to put it on the wall. I don't care about the sticker that much. Um, I want to see the album. It's not super. I, I I've been looking for a copy of this for under twenty five dollars for over a year. You can slit it open without having to <clears throat> remove the shrink wrap. Oh yeah, for sure. I will do that, but I'll probably remove the shrink wrap when I hang it on the wall. This is much more procedural. I'm kind of missing the audio of the razor blade on the plastic. This is now an ASMR channel. If you watch our last video, Olivia Rodrigo, Chris, one of the Olivia Rodrigo videos, we go ham on AMS. We, we did. We listened to we listened to a, a three and a half minute Olivia Rodrigo song, and then we talked for twenty seven minutes about audio and compression and stuff. Oh, well. <laughs> Into the microphone. There's a Blue October song that has the most nastiest mouth, like lip smacking sounds that's ever been recorded. In oh, history. that's just usually what I hear when I listen to Blue October. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's pretty. Look at that. It is pretty. I'm disappointed that it's not more clear, but it is wake. It's it probably doesn't look to you the same as it looks to us, Chris. It's quite yeah. it's quite clear. If you can, it looks right. green to you, yeah. but it is not. Yeah. It is quite clear. If I hold it up to a I light, love it. yeah, you, it, it's it looks like marbled uh, with yellow streaks in there. That's cool. Looking. That's so, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been looking for this forever. Like I said, I managed to get it somewhat. For about the last five months or so, no one has posted a copy for less than 30 bucks. And someone posted one for $19.99 the other day on eBay for with $5 shipping. 
And I was like, sold. I was like, I'll offer you sixteen ninety nine. And they were like, sure. Didn't even tell me. Just shipped it out the next day to my house. <laughs> so, Fantastic. so I got it for I think it was like twenty one something. With wow. tax, which is really great. That's now one of my prized records. It's not one of the most valuable or anything. My most valuable record by far is my birthday massacre record. It's worth like, I think there's one for sale for over $2,000 on eBay right now. Woo! The most, Boy, that'll any, be the thing that you get to use when the most anyone emergency. has sold, I think is $279 on discogs, but there's only like one or two copies out there in the world circulating of that birthday massacre album. Which one is it? Violet, their first big album. Huh. They only, they did like a limited pressing of it, and I didn't even think of it at the time. I was like, oh, I like that album. I, I, I support everything the Birthday Massacre does. I have three Birthday Massacre vinyl, and they're all worth over $100. Cool. E- easily. Yeah, they're, they're my most expensive things that I own in terms of like a single piece of media. That's not like a box set or whatever. So I just wanted to point that out because we did have that one jerk in the YouTube comments who really hurt my feelings by saying, clicks on video, sees dude in a Power Man 5000 shirt. Don't have to listen to anything he says. And I was just like, oh. That's wrong. That's that an incorrect cuts me thing to, to the think. quick, sir. You have hurt my feelings. So Power Man rules. It's probably that KMD guy or whatever, KDM guy. <laughs> He's been sticking around this whole time waiting for me to mention Power Man 5000 again. Whatever. Okay. Power Man rules. All right. So what are we doing in this video, you may ask yourself? Well, 26 minutes after starting recording, we are going to be listening. Bad. We are going to be listening to Beyond Magnetic, the EP. And we're also going to check out some of the demos from Demo Magnetic. So this is a sort of a companion video for Death Magnetic. Which is the one we did a premiere for, which we're talking about earlier, how much fun yeah. that was. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to do a premiere for this one too, I think. Even though I pray to God it will be Way shorter. Oh, that was something else I was going to say. Let's decide right now, the three of us. Let's make longer videos. We have three people. We have three people here. Everyone gets a vote. The next Metallica album we listen to, should it be A, Lulu, or B, Hardwired? Absolutely Hardwired. Absolutely. Lulu is going to be the type of thing that you do where you're like, how long can I listen to this for charity? (laughs) Oh, that's why I think we should listen to Lulu. I've made it through the whole thing several times, and even recently. Ugh, and a lot I just, of people, just hate Lou a, Reed a so lot much. of people have been commenting that they want us to listen to Lulu because in their discography it would be what's next. Now this we whole, know that it's not a Metallica record, yeah. but you can comment it anyway. Now this whole time I have been thinking that we would do Lulu after we're done with Hardwired. But then we were talking about it last time, and I think Chris kind of convinced me that we should maybe do Lulu next. One of the reasons for that is because I have decided that we are no longer going to have three and a half hour to four hour long videos. We're not doing it anymore. It's too much work. It's too much work. And so to me... Are you just going to start splitting them into two videos now then? (laughs) I think so. Hardwired is quite easy. Hardwired is a double album. So we're going to do one video on the first half, one video on the second half. The exact same thing can be said for Garage Days and for S&M. Both of those are two disc sets. And I, I'm not even fully convinced yet that we should do the second disc on Garage Inc. However, people have been recommending, and I've been seeing it forever. And I've seen videos of people online saying that they think the best Metallica songs are that 595 Garage Days thing, which I don't know what people are crazy, but that's that like cheap EP or whatever they released, right? Of cover songs. Those those songs are all so good. Like of the two albums in Garage Revisited, you'll like that one the best, I think. That's that's load reload territory for sure. Hmm. Every every cover that Metallica has ever done is better than the original version of the song. Interesting. I mean, I've heard definitely heard Turn the Page and Whiskey in the Jar. Mm-hmm. So those are two songs that we can scratch off. But and, and get ready to disagree. Is that what's happening? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm I'm always pretty I'm always pretty reluctant when people say that. I I, I am I am not in general a huge fan of cover songs. Oh sure, okay. I mean, That's fair. watching cover bands live is something that I've done a lot, and I enjoy that, and I think it's fun, and I think it's a good way to drink beer and dance with your friends. Um, Sometimes it's interesting. We were were just, but we were just listening to some of that Perfect Circle stuff. Yeah, and those are technically cover songs, and I think that that's really interesting when you do something in a completely right. And that's what I maybe okay. See, that's what Chris Chris Parker and I have had. There he goes. He's gone. Hold on, while we find Chris Parker. (laughs) 
do, do, I'm back. Do, 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 He's back. Do. Hi, Chris Parker. All right. Because uh, yeah, I was gonna go ahead. Yeah, Patrick and I used to disagree about this, and I'm on I'm on board with his side of things now. I used to think that the best covers were just identical copies of the original, but now I'm like, I want to hear that shit get wild. <laughs> I, yeah, I want to hear I want to hear something different. See, for me, there's mm-hmm. nothing cooler than a song that's not a metal song, and then a metal band doing a cover of like a pop song or whatever. To me, I love yeah, that. I absolutely I love, it love when that it. Happens. But I also like it when. Um, I love it when any genre other than hip hop does a hip hop song because what the hell you like dynamite hack, right? Dynamite hack, uh, boys in the hood. One of the greatest songs of all time. I just, I, I'm sorry. I can't get on board with that one. Hmm. I think I that they're, about I saying. saw, I saw a, uh, if you know, you know, I saw a bluegrass band. Do, Dude, that's another example. Do yes. regulators a while ago, and while it could Ooh. have been done better, I mean, regulators. What just is regulators? Sl- what is that? We have to do a single song reaction to that now. You've never heard regulators? Song. Warren G. Warren G. Warren G. Who's that? <laughs> oh my god! Um, <laughs> you're saying you're quite the <laughs> for such a hip hop fan, you really are hating shit out of one of the yeah, greatest regulators songs is like the Warren quintess- G. Ooh, regulators is like the quintessential G funk song. G funk, wow. Okay. G funk. Anyway, we might be doing a single song reaction there's a, later. There's a bluegrass band called Iron Horse that has two killer Metallica, Metallica cover. Met- yeah, those yeah. are good. I like. I I listen to those a bunch. I used to when I was like when I had to choose music to play at corporate events. I would often go find like. Ugh. Like covers like that, like a bluegrass band doing Metallica, or Patrick gave me this terrible MIDI programmed Lamb of God on strings thing, <laughs> and, oh, I, and I would play it at like corporate fundraisers as background music, and nobody would know what it was. That's and fantastic. Like it was, you know, and I would be like, "Oh, this is laid to rest." Ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody would. Okay, know. so anyway, anyway, we're not talking about that here. We're talking about Death Magnetic, and we're talking about Beyond Magnetic and Demo Magnetic. So, um, so, but like I said, so, okay, well, I guess we're still undecided, but I, I will probably do, part of me, the Chris Parker, the reason I wanted to maybe do Lulu next was mm-hmm. because I feel like we have to do Lulu in one video, mm-hmm. no matter how long it takes. And so like, that could be our last like Metallica album in one video. You know, video. it'd be fun. We won't do this. We won't. So don't even ask us to. But it would be really fun if we just live streamed listening to all of Lulu on repeat until everybody stopped watching and just see who can make it the longest. Oh, that's that's <laughs> like dangerous. A, an endurance, like, an endurance like a hold stream. your hand on the car contest. <laughs> you're thing. gonna it's, get <laughs> you're gonna get like five Abeds who just absolutely will never leave no matter what happens. <laughs> <laughs> the prize is nothing. It's just shame. Yep. The experiment is over. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So I think I think I want to maybe make the executive decision and say I think we should do Lulu next. Okay. All right. That way we're saving something good, Chris, for after that. That is that is also a fair. You know what I mean? And then also then yeah. from then on we can make our Metallica videos a little bit more laid back and not three and a half hours long. Although this one doesn't look like we're off to a very we'll good see. start with that. Lol. So. So one other thing I have to mention hmm. regarding Metallica, and I forgot what it was as soon as I started saying that. My brain is not working very good today. Oh, is that a YouTube comment? Nope, but we did get another YouTube comment. Why do you care about cursing so much in your videos? Let it be raw and unfiltered. <clears throat> I know. I've already seen that one. I saw that one. It's like just in really case his Brian mother Patrick them. Reddington, 1750, just posted it 15 minutes ago oh, on our St. Anger was video. An, oh, there was another comment. That's Maybe exactly they posted the same it thing on, on an Olivia Rodrigo. The answer video. to that is because I want my niece, who is three years old, to be able to watch these videos in five, six, seven years and not be offended by anything we say. Fuck. <laughs> How old is your niece? <laughs> She's two right now. Ah. Uh. I promise you, she will say shit before she's 10. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about that is we do say that word around our house a lot, ironically, because it's funny. You know, over over the years, what it loses the f- it. What the difference? <laughs> I don't know. But also, I will definitely say my 
my mother is like the most strict person in the world when it comes to those things. And I want her to be able to watch our videos too. She sat the other day and watched our whole premiere, not realizing that the point of a premiere is to watch the chat. She just watched the whole video. That's cool. It's a great oh, that's video. Pretty sweet. I was like, mom, please. No, don't do that. Because <laughs> we, I, it's not the kind of thing she would like, but anyway, I'm mom proofing my video. So if anyone cares about that, I forget about the other thing I was going to say. So we're on to beyond magnetic. This album was really, this is a four track EP. No swearing in the chat. Don't tell, don't say stuff like that because now people, <laughs> yes, that's why I did it. Now people are saying, look, look at what they're saying, Chris. Look at what people are saying. Do yeah. You, you people are offending me. I'm offended. Fire left and right. Oh. My mom checks the chat. Don't swear in here. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm the one that has to do all the editing, so. Tee-hee. So this this uh, EP was released in 2011, two years after uh, the original release of Death Magnetic. Well, wow, between two and three. Yeah, we got a lot of people re- recommending that we do this, and that was one of the reasons I decided to do it for sure. So yeah, I don't I don't know too much else about this. I assume it was recorded at the same time. We don't need to mess around anymore. Let's just get into listening to it. I think I heard. Yeah, feel free to whatever I don't anybody. Know if- no, I just I don't I know that I tried to listen to this once years and years ago. I don't think I heard all four songs, but I definitely heard a couple of them and that to me it made sense that it was like Not the B sides kind of thing. Mm, okay. Yeah. I'm curious the thing I'm most curious about this is will it be mixed better than Death Magnetic? Which if you recall from that video, I was very disappointed with how the mix sounded overall. I so I Here we are, short video. Almost. Sorry, I, we can I, I forgot how big of a deal the mastering on Death Magnetic was. And I saw a bunch of people comment this, but I did not go back and remind myself of the history. But I mentioned this to another audio professional. Like, oh, I do these these Metallica reactions on YouTube, and we just did Death Magnetic. And he's like, did you listen to the CD version? I'm like, we <laughs> did for a second, and I couldn't bear it. And then he's like, yeah. it's like that's the one that ended the Loudness Wars. And I'm like, I, I saw a bunch of people comment that, and I believe you. I believe everything everybody tells me in the comments verbatim. I go write it. I go chisel it in stone. And I wake up every morning and I repeat all of the YouTube comments. Except for that guy <laughs> that disses Power Man 5000. No, that guy too. But um, <laughs> but I forgot how notorious... I mean, obviously it's Metallica it was deal, and, and it was terrible. It was a big yeah. deal. But anyway, at least we... I, if it's mastered like that, I'm out. I'm just going to go home. But oh, I don't think it is. I, th- I, 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 I don't think it's like that. I think it's going to... I'm just curious if it's going to sound better than the the version we listened to, like the iTunes version. So mm-hmm. I'm just curious. I had, and that was another surprising thing to me about Death Magnetic is that a lot of people were like trashing on the production of that record. Um, I don't get it. I mm. it's fine. Is mm-hmm. it is it, it like is it like innovative and groundbreaking? No, but it mm-hmm. sounds good. Mm-hmm. I, I listened to it a little bit more since then, just maybe like once or twice, and for sure that while I was editing the video. And I think what I said at the end of that video is probably the thing that I still hold true more, most today. It kind of just sounds like generic metal record to me. See, I don't, I don't think that which, that's the complaint. <clears throat> which, right, and I can understand that because up until now, every Metallica album has had like some crazy thing about it, and this one did too. T- to be fair, the the CD version is the one that won the Grammys or whatever. So like, you know, like we were listening to a version that was this album was so bad when it came out, it had to be fixed. Right. So we were Mm -hmm. already listening to what was supposed to be a fixed version of something that was so bad it had to be changed. But I just thought that to me, the whole thing felt a little thin. The there wasn't any character to the production, which is actually something I talk about a lot in my Grace Potter reaction. If anyone wants to to watch that video, which you all should. I don't think there was much character like the guitars to me sounded like generic guitars. The bass sounded like generic direct in bass with a little bit of distortion on it, maybe. The drums, nothing about them sounded special. The vocals sounded too low. There were no vocal overdubs, so the vocal arrangements were boring across the whole album. The vocals being too low, I think, is That's probably the, biggest the degree, only the biggest thing effects. that you could say is a fact. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was and it's really, still yeah. in this. It is still in the spectrum of being high enough, but it's just barely squeaking above yes. the line. Yes, yeah. But I wonder. 
And we talked about this in that video. I wonder if it was because of the compression that they were expecting. I wonder too, because when we listened to the compressed version on the CD, we were both like, oh, the vocals sound better. The bass sounds better here. And then it was just the god awful. And there was somebody there was somebody saying that the mixes were and I didn't go fact check this, so you, you all can and tell me that I'm wrong. It's fine. But somebody in the comments was saying or somewhere that we were reading was saying that the mixes came to the mastering guy already brick walled. That's what I read online. And if yeah. you brick walled the stems and then you brick walled the mix and then you brick walled the master, like I can understand if you brick walled your vocal bus that it would sound like it does and yeah. maybe you could squeeze I have no problem with the production and if you want a metal record with character you mean Metallica uh, uh, already on in the production Metallica did that it's called Saint Anger it's the best thing that's ever been recorded you can just go listen to it <laughs> sure. there is definitely some character sure. in there so we, did have, sure. we did have Saint Anger Dark Side of the Moon and then everything else <laughs> <laughs> we, we did have we did have a couple comments from people saying that they legitimately thought that the uh, what's the song on there that's sort of like the slower one, Chris? Not Unforgiven Three, but like it was like Through the Something or not uh, um, the Eyes of the Something or the Something Something. You just keep picking titles from different Metallica albums. Yeah. Um, there was the uh, oh no, the, Death Magnetic's not up there. Uh, that's funny. The was it the one that was on the radio? Yeah, it was one of the singles. Um, yeah, yeah. This is a good test. Oh, actually, no, I can look it up because I have the wiki thing on here. It'll tell me which, it'll help tell me which song on uh, The Day That Never Comes. Oh. That's the one. Sorry, The Day That Never Comes. We had a couple comments say that what I was complaining about with that song because of the lowness of the, the vocals being too low and then the overall mix, I thought did not serve that style of song at all. And the same thing mm. could be said for Unforgiven 3. They said that they legitimately thought that the mix of The Day That Never Comes on the CD is better. Because they said that that one, that that song in particular, they did not distort as much. And that the mix was way better on that song. I had a couple people mention that. Huh. So I'm really curious to hear that. I own the CD, so I will definitely listen to that at some point. But I mean, if you think about when we did listen to the one off that one song off the CD, it was like, oh, now we can hear the bass. Now we can hear the thing, you know, whatever, because everything right at there zero. were moments. So, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. So let's give this a listen and see what let's we think. It. So the first track we have here is Hate Train, which, Chris, we already have a relationship with this song because Hate Train was the one song you were like, what is this song? When that guy yeah. listed his all the Metallica songs in order from his least favorite to most favorite. Yeah, this which was one was this? One. was pretty high up on his list, wasn't it? I, can't, I don't remember exactly. I just remember that being the one song that you said you didn't yeah, recall. I was like. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. They're all seven minutes long. As I look at these, li uh, okay, Chris, there's the, ex it's all seven minutes long, exactly. Bring yep. back that ridiculous Rebel joke. Rebel of Babylon is eight minutes long, exactly, but it's the last one, so it has to be a little longer. Uh, yep, yep, yep. All right, and so. instrumental, I bet. Hey, oh, God, it probably is. What if two of these songs are instrumental? They're wasting a there's lot no of way. our time. Okay, Hate Train. You ready, Chris? Yep. Hate Train in three, two, one. There's your character in the guitars. It sounds like an MP3. That kick is dry. I like it. That riff rips. Ooh. Oh, Chris, I also want to listen to I Disappear at some point. Oh, yeah. Because I haven't heard that song for probably 15, 20 years. That still rules, that song. I hope so. It's just so badass. I would say without comparing them directly, I already think this sounds better than Death Magnetic. Sounds unrefined. The bass is no definition in it. It's even even make it out. Oh, 
vocals are, I would say, the correct volume. No effects on his vocals at all. I mean, other than that compression and EQ. Sounds like it was recorded in a small vocal booth. Yeah. I like this. I do. I wish they'd do this more. Go to like a softer part in the middle of the song. Usually they start their song soft and then get faster. Some good singing. Not a single vocal overdub at all so far. Yeah. I didn't necessarily expect that, but I mean there's a lot of production missing from this, I think. It's 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 pretty it's pretty, it's pretty unrefined. Yeah. But that's understandable. Yeah, for sure. It's basically the fuel riff. Yeah, you're right. Yep, you're right. Ooh. Key change. Just load, reload. Sounds like an ambulance whose lights were dying. Cool. There's a little muddiness to the overall mix, but it's not that bad. No, it's not too bad. No. I think more than anything, the songwriting, the direction, feels a little bit lost. Uh, Just in that bridge part, it was like, where does this want to go? Are they going back to the chorus again? Yeah. Yes. No. Sort of. Is that a reprise? I like this. I love the chorus. Yeah. I'm 
I'm glad that Metallica does this, that they are okay with releasing this stuff. You know? It's not very often you get like a solo part with James singing over it too, so that was nice. That's true. Yeah. Dude, that was great. I liked it, and I think I know why I didn't make the album. Okay. Why? Because that first line, the first vocal line, the lyrics are dumb. What was it? Do you remember what it was? Hate is a train. <laughs> it works when it comes back to it in the bridge part later. Yeah. But to open the song like that, I was like, Ew! do that but then the rest of the ones that are like rage is a flame and then there was one more that was something is a something and it yeah. rhymed with the hate train that was cool yeah. that song rips i agree the I, riffs are cool the yep. chorus is awesome yep the, the mm -hmm. performances mm -hmm. are good all around like it's not like there was a weak performance or anything you just james why didn't you just rewrite the first line of lyrics and it could have been on the record mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think i, I, I like i don't know i think if it if you stuck that, if you just pried open Death Magnetic and stuck that somewhere in the middle, like a deck of cards, you'd know when you got to it. Like, yeah, because it'd be like, why is there a song here that sounds good? No, <laughs> you'd be like, why does this song sound f like it? I don't know. It definitely sounds unfinished. Okay. Do you think the songwriting, or are you letting the production tell you that? I think that's more of a production thing, but it, songwriting it sounds a little kind of B-sidey. This I is think, supposed to reason. sound like a demo, right? They recorded it at the same time when they recorded the other thing. Like they recorded, remember they recorded, I think they had 17 songs. They whittled it down from like 20 something to, to 17. They recorded all of them. They put the ones on the album, they put on the album. And then these are the songs that were like the B-sides. But these didn't get, these didn't get drum replacement. These didn't get vocal yeah, overdubs. I was gonna say, they just the didn't, guitar they solos didn't get redid. Right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I don't think as much production was put into these. That, correct. Yeah. That siren guitar thing, that might have been. God, that was cool. I need, as soon as that uh -huh. started, I was like, mm, Chris loves this. Mm. <laughs> I did I'm, not have a problem with that. I thought the drums sounded nice because they didn't sound like anything was wrong with them. You know? <laughs> like every They're metallic drums in the room. What? I thought the drums sounded good. The drums sound good on Death Magnetic. But I thought, they no. no. Yes, they They're do. They're not bad, but I remember, well, I guess I... I don't they, remember it this, as good as this, much as I should. There's no that the kick drum is not the right shape. The kick drum is all in the middle, and it's not right. in the low and the high like it's supposed to be. The snare does not crack enough. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on with the cymbals because they're just making noise back there. They're not defined like they would be on the record. I think it's just production. I don't think – I'm. this is not Metallica production. I mean, even by Metallica standards, this is demo. Mm -hmm. But it's cool, and I'm going to dip my toe into Metallica fandom. I'm going to try which is not something I normally do. But I think that this is really cool to hear Metallica play these songs like this because like some stuff has been done, the whole thing's in time and more or less in tune. The guitar thing that would have not made it to the album ever like that. Those lead guitars, it was really cool sounding, but like they wouldn't have ever made it to the record like that. But it's really cool just to hear it. So like obviously there has been audio processing done to make it sound even as good as it does. Right. Right. There's mm -hmm. compression and EQ that's going on on there, but like to hear it so raw where you're not hiding behind production stuff, like right. it's really cool. It's like, this is actually four guys. This is the raw thing mm -hmm. to me. When you, when somebody says raw and this is not raw, somebody spent a lot of time mixing this and trying to make it sound good. But when people say saying anger sounds raw, it, I would disagree with you. I, I know what you mean, but I don't think that's the right word to use. Mm -hmm. St. Anger sounds highly produced. It just sounds weird. Mm -hmm. Maybe even bad. Depend on what five second interval. Of song you're talking uh, yes, about. In, indeed. But this, like this, if you wanted to make, so, if if you if you said, Chris, make me a record that sounds like four guys jamming in a garage. This yeah. is what I would make. I would mm, not. This make, is this is that's actually what that sounds like to me. If hmm. you brought this to a a label and was like, here's our demo. They'd be like, how many albums would you like to make? And how much yes. money would you like to make making them? <laughs> well, in 1987. I don't know. I, what would I, think, I think you guys are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys are giving it enough credit. I, I think it sounds better than, I, 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 I think that the, the frequency range of the guitars was better than on Death Magnet. Death Magnet, the guitars just sound thin. 
I think. There's I there's no mid ranges to it. This. There's no mid range to it whatsoever. Now I do think that there was a little bit of like a muddiness to this mix overall, and you really couldn't hear the, what the bass was doing the whole time. But like to me, listening, we would have to go back and A B it with something from Death Magnetic. Which mm-hmm. what, what the hell? Let's just do that real quick. I'm just uh, I, there's no way I can give this to you, Chris. So we're just going to listen fine. to like two seconds of of Death Magnetic here. That's it. We're going to open, we'll do what? Which one? Should we just do All Nightmare Long? Sure. Okay, I'm going to, okay. Chris, I'm I'm so sorry. Just sit there for a second and don't. I've got it with me. I, I, I'm ready to go. So we're going to listen to a second of Hate Train. We're going to listen to, I'm just going to skip around Hate Train a little bit to hear what we just heard. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to just open All Nightmare Long and I'm going to skip to about one minute, okay? Okay. I'll tell you when we're going to do that. So this, So right now I'm just skipping through Hate Train. Okay, now I'm going to go to All Nightmare Long. Ready, Chris? Mm -hmm. In three, two, one. And now I'm going to skip to one minute. Right now. Drums sound like garbage. That snare drum is not good. But you can hear everything, and it sounds separate from each other. I mean, this sounds better. This sounds this sounds like a record, and the other one sounds like a demo. I like them both, yeah, but... Yeah, I completely agree. Well, let's hear him sing a little. I completely agree yeah. with The vocals are too low. It's definitely you know muddy. What, you know what else you're hearing? I think that you're hearing you're hearing more dynamic range in this. There is less compression on this than there is. Oh on... yeah. Oh yeah. It's way quieter too, which is interesting. See, to me, the, these guitars just sound very white noisy. Uh, I would okay. I will agree with you that I like the guitar tone better on this. On the okay, now we're skipping around too much. But like, listen to this lead guitar too. Where's lead guitar? Right, the lead guitar here sounds the exact same as the guitars on the sides, as the rhythm guitars, pretty much. And here it's just like, Other than, other than the abundance of mid-range frequencies, I just straight up like Hate Train's mix better. I cannot believe that you're saying that. Yeah. Other, yeah, no other, way. other than, worse. other than the, the, the like mushiness of it, yeah. which I don't think is that bad, but it's, it's not so bad. It's terrible. I don't think, but it's, you, know, you could just duck a little bit of that and it'd be better. I definitely like the way that sounds better than. That's, I, I'm not going to disagree with you, but I am shocked that you are saying that. Hmm. 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 I think that the record sounds. I don't know. It's different. It's so different. It's hard to it even. It is compare different. Them. It's different, which is interesting because I think. But they it doesn't came sound like a. Re- it doesn't sound like a record. I like the fact it that it sounds it like sounds a demo. Demo-y. But it sounds like a demo. I don't know. It does. I, I, like I don't it. agree with that. I think that it just That's sounds insane. like a different sound. It just it sounds like a different. Approach. If I got a if I got a retail album of songs that sounded like Hate Train, I would wonder what B side album I accidentally yeah, bought. Yeah, I would. I would. Hmm. It would That's be crazy. I, to me, if it was sold to me as this was going to be a major release, mm-hmm. and I got that, you I would guys be don't ups- listen to enough stuff that sounds real bad. You don't listen to enough stuff that sounds real bad. <laughs> Go watch any video on my channel from this year. Everything sounds like ass. <laughs> This sounds so much better than Orbit Culture. That this sounds so much better than Scar Symmetry, The Heavy, uh, July Talk, any anything this I've done this like year. This sounds like a demo. I like All that those it sounds like a demo. I just don't. But it sounds like broken. a demo. I just don't agree with that. I don't think it sounds like a demo. You would never. You would never let me release something that sounded like that. I disagree. I don't understand what you're hearing with it. That's so wrong. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I like it, but like the processing is just not there. It's not, yeah. I mean, it would definitely sound better if you just boosted all the high frequencies over like 9K. On this soft part, I think that the drums really work. I think you could almost get away with this and call it an album. Yeah. But on the heavy parts, like the, the drums we're, don't hit hard enough at all. We're listening to Hate Train again, Chris. Just a little. Sp- I stopped mm-hmm. it now. Man, I don't know. Let's listen to the second song and see how our conversation. Yeah, I is like different. it. I'm not trying to say I don't like it. Right, right. But I'm going. I'm. I think the Chris's agree that this this sounds like a demo. Yeah, that's so it interesting. Does. I just don't think that. So this you next song. You don't think it I sounds like don't. a demo? I honestly don't. Okay. So this next song is just a bullet away. Maybe the songs will have like a really disparity between them all because they weren't necessarily done at the would. same time. I'm curious about mm-hmm. that. So this next song, Just a Bullet Away, this is the song that was made out of the very first track that they ever played that was a new song after they released St. Anger. Okay. Remember? So then like two, cool. early, early 2006 or whatever is when they started to play this song live. And then I think portions of this song became an, uh, another song on the album or something. So I don't know if this is like a reworked version or if there will Ooh. be riffs that you might be able to notice or something. So. I, I, I don't so. know. I love it when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is just a bullet away in three, two, one. Same sound. Maybe guitars are double tracked? Or another mic is being there there there's two arrival times on those guitars. At least on James. It might just be this part of the song. Kick drums maybe it's more intense. I don't know if it's better. I think the snare drum sounds further away a little. The guitars are way louder here. That riff rips though too. You're living a lie, yes, you're living a lie, yes. Kicks off with clicky, click drum. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a more, cli- it's a more intense drum. than it was on the click <laughs> drum. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> click That's drum. Funny. Oh my god! Good job, Chris. <laughs> That's what you just said, right? Click drum. Yeah, it is. You yeah, made yeah. up a funny that we can have on a T-shirt. Click drum. This riff rips too. It's that same feel. Demo. I feel really self-conscious about what I'm listening to now because you guys really messed with me there. I mean, I would give anything to have Ride or Master or Justice sound half this good. It's, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't sound cohesive. Like there has no, there's no film that has glued them all into a single piece of one song. I would, I would agree with that. I still like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the song sounds like it's awesome. I love that riff. I like the lyrics in this one too. Kind of like a religious thing. I like that he's singing a little faster too. Weird. Just a bullet away. Just a bullet away from leaving you. Just a bullet away. Stop the voices in my head. This riff is just so much reminding me of Frantic. Huh. I mean, it's just the same notes on the guitar or whatever, but same general t- guitar tone, too. I definitely think the vocals sound a little demo in this. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's that man reference that you're doing. Shine down. Is that shine down? It's probably a line from Dirty Harry or something though. Oh, misery. Isn't is that a song from 72 Seasons? Misery. She haunts me, right? Kind of. Yeah. My friend in misery is also from Black Album, so it comes up a lot. That's the end of that? No way. Nope. Okay, well, this is a different song. That was too long of a pause. I know, I was going to say... The pause was a little clunky. The pause was, yeah. They do a good pause now and again, but that had like an extra second and a half that it didn't need. (laughs) Yeah. Somebody forgot to drag it over one bar in Pro Tools. (laughs) It's like when you do a podcast edit and suddenly you just got like everybody stops talking for ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, forgot to accidentally drag the pieces together. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. Sounds like Unforgiven. One, okay. two, or three. Bad distortion there. But there's a lot of mid range frequencies flying around here building up. They left the rhythm guitars down at a volume. Yeah. Like they should be up now. <laughs> they forgot to I bring noticed them that. Up. That's what it's like. There's just like everything just feels like here's a part you're listening to while you record this. And then. That was cool. That was cool. Ooh, loved it. I loved it too. I just love the fact that the vocals are at the correct volume. It doesn't make me want to scratch my brain out in frustration. I like that little melodic move that he does there. That's cool. On the guitar? Or? I thought he just cleared his throat, but I think it was Chris. <laughs> I thought it was James. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. There's the bad distortion you're talking about. Yeah. I think that it might be done this time. I hope it just kind of the sound faded out. Yeah. I'm... Dang. What? I like that too. I like it a lot too. That was cool. Now, I like better. On, the, on the drums. Yeah, that time I was noticing a little bit more. I was like, yeah. So I that's what you do. I know that sound. Because I've made that sound many, many times <laughs> mm-hmm. when you have a bad kick recording and you know what you want it to sound like and you think you can do it with audio process. And I know that that's not what who did this was doing, but they did not have a good recording. They did not sample replace it. And they just, I can see the EQ curve in my brain of how <laughs> much they have the compression that's on there, right? You do the thing where you have a slow attack, so you really try to get the punch as much as you can out mm-hmm. of there. And then you boost the high frequencies to make it really clicky. I still like it. I think it's really fun to listen to. But again, it does not sound like a record. And in a way, that's awesome. And it, no, it's awesome. But like, it's not an album. It's not... it. One thing that, as somebody who is sort of indirectly, like, I'm not a music producer, I'm a sound designer, so my world is a little bit different, and I often consider, like, professional music producers, engineers, mastering all those guys at the top level 
are basically doing magic. And to listen to this, recognize that it sounds super demo-y and trying to think about how I would, you know, what would be done to make it not sound demo-y anymore. I don't really have any answers. <laughs> it's just like these guys that produce these albums, like they really are doing the Lord's work sometimes. I just don't know what happens. Yeah, there, I mean, so, I mean, there's just a lot more to me what I'm hearing. <clears throat> And Patrick will surely correct me, and also you will in the comments. There's the EQ. I, there's frequency response stuff that could be cleaned up to make yeah, things sound better. The kick and the snare just don't sound good. They d were not. You can go all the way back to the raw sound coming off the microphone, and it did not sound that great. And then the processing that you do to try to make it sound like modern metal production makes it sound like that. <clears throat> so right you just sample replace it it was right. 2011 that's what you did yeah that's what you do now yep. and and then there's just like there's no time-based processing anywhere right like that's a lot of what gives you that sheen is just delays and reverbs mm. that kind of make things seem like there's oh, something sure, yeah. going fuller, thicker and fuller and stuff. Mm, yeah and there's just none of that which i think is really cool to i mean you, i think you I, that's kind of one of the things parker. I... see that's what chris parker should do on the remote chris channel is sound designer tries to produce a song <laughs> i mean i would that would be would really be, fun to watch you with it would your be a skills hell of a practice like to see you know, to watch you to do that grind out that skill and try to figure I, out because i've thought about that a few times just like if, to get some stems from people who, with nothing on them and like how can i make this sound cohesive <laughs> I, I wish i wish we've talked about this many times but i wish that you you were confident enough to try to make a song so that we could have a song making contest and the three of us could, mm. we could, could do it. We could do it. Well, I don't even we know. I wouldn't say it's a confidence one. thing. I can't make music. <laughs> well, I, I, if I, I know, but to. I, you know, how many years ago was it that you never would have, that you would have said, I can't make sound design for a video game? Well, no. And I, I two, obviously, two I years understand ago, that music, you have that. music is definitely a learnable skill. And I know that it could be learned and I could be just like anybody else. But as it sits right now, I cannot do music. So we, you mm -hmm. know, if you want to hit me up in five or 10 years and maybe try this song design thing again, I'm mm -hmm. all for it. Anyway. But anyway. I like it. I, I like, like it too. I like both of these songs. I thought that one was cool. Other than the gap was too long, which I think would be the only like was kind of a strange roar. thing. Yeah. But that squeaky guitar thing. Yeah, God, that, that was, was interesting. Cool. <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I like you could, yeah, when it comes to EQs, like just take a really sharp dip, just cut out like, and you could probably have a pretty like wide. 10K. You, you could have a pretty wide. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> for most of that stuff, just because there was a lot of buildup in the mid range frequencies there, a lot. Oh, and like the other area was that, that rhythm like, guitar thing. The the, the oh, yeah, like, it didn't come back up after the solo. Yeah, yeah. Well, not even that. Yeah. Yes, that was like a tech. That was like a legit technical thing. But the the section before that, I don't know if I cared for it as much. When you were saying I like this, you guys both kind the of the guitar harmony that. thing. Yeah, I don't know if I cared for that. I I, I don't I don't like the way it sounded really at all. And I thought that it would have been nice to have that be more of a background part and then the like actual plucking part be more brought up to the forefront. Not necessarily like the lead part. But because it was spread wide, and then you could still hear that sort of plucking part, or not plucking, I don't know what the word for it is, the arpeggiating chords, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have liked to have had a little bit more of that in there, but the way they did it like this, having those things spread wide, and then after they went through it the round, through it like <laughs> once or twice, then that arpeggiated guitar part went away, and there was more of like a chunky riff, and then that kind of built up a little bit, and then when those went away, that kind of just kept going, and that was where we noticed that weird part. But <laughs> I don't know, I think that that could have been, like you said, that probably if that was with EQ was cleaned up so that it wasn't so kind of muddy sounding and then there was some delays or reverb on that, that would have made that sound a little bit shinier, a little nicer. Mm -hmm. And that probably would have worked for me a little bit more. I will also say, have has there been any moment in, in either of these two songs where you've noticed the bass guitar? Yeah. When you I think the beginning of that song, the bass was really clear. OK. All right. I guess I didn't wasn't paying attention to it in that regard. I did while we were listening to that. It did like I had a light bulb moment. I'm like, oh, there's supposed to be bass in this, is there? And then I listened. And I'm like, okay, I can hear what it's doing, but like I can't yeah. tell what it's doing. For some reason, sometimes when I listen to certain music, I think that what the guy did when he was editing it was he took the bass guitar signal and he just cut out everything above like 200 hertz and then <laughs> made the signal stereo for whatever reason. Just this massive giant thing with no definition. 
And obviously it's not stereo because you would definitely be able to hear that. But for some reason, in when I listen to stuff that kind of is mixed like this, it just sounds like the bass is too wide. Hmm. Now, the reason for that is because there's a lot of bass being left into the guitars. Hmm. You know, on Death Magnetic, there was some low frequencies in the guitars, but there was no mid range. It was mostly just high frequencies and then some like low, low lows. This has like full frequency range guitars. There should have been more EQ'd out to make it sound a little bit better. But I think that's one of the things that I might be enjoying about the way the guitars sound more here. Mm -hmm, it it sounds to me more like a guitar that could have existed on St. Anger rather than Death Magnetic. And I've said multiple times, I like the way the guitars sound on St. Anger. Oh, more they do than, sound good. More Right. Now, the guitars on St. Anger were way less distorted than this, or the, the approach to the distortion was completely different. So, I don't know. I like it. Yeah, let's let's go to track three and see. This is Hell and Back, which I believe is also a Sabaton song. Yes, I know who Sabaton is, so don't Why freak though? out in the comments. Um, Primo Victoria. Why hmm? do you need to know who Sabaton is? I like Sabaton. Sabaton's cool. A lot of people like Sabaton. Okay, I, I don't know. They're like the Sabaton. European version of Five Finger Death Punch. That's interesting. Oh, now my my love for them has gone my up. My distaste for them <laughs> seems more justified is what I was going to say. Now, before someone climbs through the screen and shoots me, I understand what I just said there. Like, I mean in popularity. Like, no, Sabaton and Five Finger Death Punch are not the same at all. If you asked me, I definitely think Sabaton's a way better band. I think all the stuff they do with, with about history and everything is really cool. They have no screaming vocals whatsoever. It's just like the dude's clean vocals. Uh, I think Sabaton's a pretty cool band, but I haven't heard any of their albums since... I don't remember what the last... There, I have two of their albums. One sounds like garbage, so I never listened to it. And the other one is their really good one. It has the soldier getting punched on the front, and his neck is like way too long. It's weird artwork, but... It's got a bunch of good songs. You know, you want to listen to a good band that sings about history? Sure. What? Iron Maiden. Oh, really? Do they do they do like stuff like that? Yeah. Really? I did not know that. I honestly did not know that. Yeah. Oh, That's, yeah. Cool. That's cool. I thought all their songs were about that like fictional character dude they created or whatever. No. No, I don't think I don't think any of You're thinking of Dio. No, no, no. I'm thinking of Iron Maiden. Like the Iron Maiden character has his own like comic book run that's Eddie. been going forever. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. That's on that. all of their album covers and everything. So it's really cool. That, yeah, but then that's not what the songs are about. Okay, that's awesome. I had no clue. Yeah, not all of the songs, but some of them are. All right, Hell and Back by Metallica. In three, two, one. That should have gone around once before the drums came in. Yeah, I would agree. To at least figure out what that guitar is. Hold on, I heard a bass for a second. Bass sounds good. Yeah. No bass in there yet. Right now. There's the bass. Really weenie. Yeah. This... this this song sounds more producey yeah, than polished. the other ones. Well, the snare drum has been brought up a lot in this song, the volume. Kick drum sounds way better. That's that's how that kick should sound. Eh, close. Oh, Ooh. that was cool. I just like telling you what, shoo. Yeah. Vocals. Is it yeah. just fret buzzing? Vocals are low. Did he say I've she's ratchet? She's ratchet, but she comforts me. Comforts me? When did so. when did that phrase become a thing? Being ratchet. I don't think that's what he said. Maybe he pioneered it. That's what I was wondering. That's not a bad thing to say, is it? That someone's ratchet. I mean, I know it's not. An, it's an insult, but like, no, I don't think being a big fan of wrestling, that's the whole thing. Sasha's ratchet is like one of the big, big comments or big chants we had for a long time in NXT. By the way, shout out to Bray Wyatt. I don't want to look at lyrics. Wretched, not ratchet. Oh, wretched. I wished it would have been I was ratchet. wondering if it was wretched. Wretched is a Metallica word. Ratchet. I think ratchet yeah. would have been way cooler. You just ruined the song for me. In my brain, he'll... He yelled at for talking. My headcanon is that he said ratchet. Straight to hell and back. Straight, straight to hell. That was great. Straight. That was neat. 
classic Hetfield sound. It is. Tom drums sound good. Yeah. I like how that is like genuinely quieter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're not the over compression. I swear to God, I like how this sounds. I am not I messing around. Like th- this, this is, is the best the, of the three. This is the most so polished sounding production we've had so far. The lyrics, the vocals always give it away as a demo, though. I guess it is very dry. And they're very compressed. Yeah, they are very compressed. I wonder if the vocals would have sounded like this on Death Magnetic had they had them at the proper volume. Similar. time who keeps sitting there mike chris are you hitting something oh yeah. he's doing this yeah tapping my thumb sorry <laughs> no no that's fine it sounded like you were hitting your microphone Questionable kick, kick drum hits in there. Questionable timing? Yeah. By Lars Ulrich? Yes. I know. Shocking. I definitely like the solos. Everything we've heard here way better than anything from Death Magnetic. I like them all. I don't know if it's... But they're good. I was just not impressed with very much from Death Magnetic, if I remember correctly. They're doing a lot of lead soloing with James singing over it, which they don't normally do. Really I think they might do more of that in uh, hardware. Okay. Could be wrong. Seems like it. I mean, you can sing over it if all he's doing is just the same, like, three notes really fast for measures at a time. You know? weird that the kick drum stops there. Yeah. I noticed they did that both times. He was like all crazy and then he like stopped the kick and just did a snare roll. Did it twice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, well. I like that song too. When that song (laughs) first started, I was going to say this is my favorite of the three. But I think after hearing the whole thing, I don't think so. I really like that riff, that main riff, the dead, I don't even know what what it was anymore. But like (laughs) That sort of first riff when it first kicked in, and I was like, oh, it made me think of Load Reload. 
I really liked that a lot. And then, yeah, I don't think the vocals were as as interesting in that song. I think the vocals were the best in the second song so far. But, yeah, I don't know. I like them. Mm -hmm. These could, I don't know. I think that these could have been. On the album? On an album. I don't know. Yeah, about. on an album, yeah. There could have been another one. We could have had one between Hardwired and Death Ooh. Magnetic. I know that yeah, that's Death Repellent. Re- Death Repellent. <laughs> death Repellent? <laughs> <laughs> Hardwired to die. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, should we just go to the next one and do that one? Drop in. Rebel of Babylon. You ready, Chris? I am. Please, please don't be an instrumental. In three, Can you imagine a demo instrumental that's eight minutes. Woof. In three, two, one. I would probably like it. It might be. I'm sure I would too. But usually, I think they write two instrumentals for al- per album. So this is the sound they don't make normally. Yeah, it is. I love the <laughs> strum on that off to the side. There was some stuff on that last song too. Some power chord guitar. Grip your bottle tight. Just float away. Ooh. Rebel, is it hard to leave? What makes you stay? Go take your poison ink. Sign life away. Then take your dirty spoon and dig your grave. Dig your grave. Kind of old, wet, old westy. That riff rips. How can they just do a riff and it's like, this is Metallica? Like, how is that possible? What do they do that's I've been trying different? to figure that out for 15 years. What do they do that's different than other bands? I keep, I keep thinking it's the guitar tone, but I don't, I don't know, know how to answer I your mean, question. I mean, I guess. Did that just get louder? If the kick drum was doing that pattern too, it'd be so sweet. I'm surprised Lars didn't do that. He probably couldn't. And they didn't take the time to go in and add extra kick drums. That was the joke. Oh, oh, sorry. I guess I have more faith in Lars than you. Little high schooly, but whatever. Interesting choice. Yeah. There's some garage in this song for sure. I'm hearing Merciful Fate big time. the resolution on that it was a little clunky yeah the guitars do seem like they're being pushed a lot more here maybe not right here level yeah i like how those chord stabs come out This part, this part of the song is not good. It's a little mediocre. I do like that, though. Yeah. Yeah. The rock and roll riff. I love that vocal thing. Yeah. Good stuff. Just is not. I, I like I like that move. The words just don't. It's so out of flow with the rest of the lyrics. Who 
new guitar tone. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. This is way better than any sec anything that was on Death Magnetic. The this section, the solo, this section. I, I would agree. Like the solo started somewhere and it's going somewhere. It's not just perpetual motion. He changed. That. They don't do a lot of key changes, do they? Yeah. So this just, just turned into a grab bag. I love this. This is reminiscent of that thing I was talking about earlier. They should should have got some of the low, mid frequencies out yeah, of these. Yeah, the mix is like good, this guitar's at like ninety, and this yeah. one's at like fifty yeah. degrees. And the wrong one was a lot too loud. Huh. One of the songs starts just like this with the bass, right? Cyanide, I think maybe. Yeah. This is, it's just like, a, they're just doing a bunch of riffs. Just yeah. Like, let's take that one and put it over here for this song. Take that one over here for this song. P. That's. I, I am not complaining. Love it. I wouldn't be surprised if these lyrics weren't even written down before he did this. Chris hates it. He hates that. I hate that resolution. Ah, I really like it. It doesn't want it to go either, one to direction, then it's like <laughs> too many syllables, huh? I, said, I don't even know if it's that. So I wanted it to go up, you know, finish on the oh. up. I think there are some parts that are kind of high schooly, like in the songwriting okay. process. Okay. Hmm. And I think, I think that that's another one that probably didn't make the album because of lyrics. The lyrics. I think that some of those riffs could have been cut out completely and then stitch it together a little bit. So the song was only maybe like six minutes long and mm -hmm. that would have been a better song. I think the solo section in that song was the best solo section we've heard on this album. I loved the way they were doing what they were doing. Um, and then they kind of just did the riff salad thing after that for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that every one of these songs came back to vocals, which is great. I wasn't sure this one was going to. Yeah, but it did. And I'm glad it did. But it did. So, now, Chris, were you singing the lyrics to this one a little bit there? Are you pretty familiar with this song or? I've never heard this song. Oh, you didn't didn't um, remember it. Okay, okay. No, I, yeah, I have not heard this one ever. I, I thought it thought looked like was... you were mouthing along with it, and then I thought maybe, because the way you were reacting to it, I thought was maybe like you were unfamiliar with it. Right, yeah, no, I don't know it. I mean, you yeah. know, 
you hear him say the same thing. Sure, sure. And I might have just come. seen you yawn or something and thought that you were. Something. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I really like that stigmata. Like yeah. That, nah, 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 that's so groovy. Ba-ba-da. Such a cool way to do it. And then and All then Father. Talking about Odin or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, when the song first started, I thought that his vocal performance was not, not this is his performance, but the way that the vocals started at the beginning, I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this. I was really, really into it in the beginning. See, there I was there was been a more cohesive song as a whole. Okay, I would love this song. Yeah, and, and we said both right away that that part, guitar part at the beginning, should have been done several times before the drums came mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And and that was kind of a it was too abrupt that, that they came. That was the last in. song. No, I think that was this song. It was this one. Yeah, that's how long it was. <laughs> huh. But yeah, the, yeah. So I like I, I liked all of these. I'm glad that we listened. Thank you, YouTubers. Nope, you're right. It was the last one. I know it was. <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. Um, Damn it! But we're both idiots. I'm and I'm not the guy that remembers what song we're listening to. Um, I'm glad that we listened to these. I liked them all a lot. Me too. Mm-hmm. I li- I think I liked them more than some of this a lot of the stuff on Death Magnetic. I don't agree. But I think agree. I think that just but. tells me how much how important it is to me that the vocals be a centerpiece of the song. Like I just the moment I heard the vocals, I was like, my brain was like, ah. Whereas listening <laughs> on Death Magnetic, Death Magnetic, the whole time I'm like, huh? <laughs> huh? I think that Patrick needs to go listen to several thousand hours of classical music. <laughs> Why? I think that that would be good for you. There's no vocals in classical music. That is the point. I don't mm-hmm. like instrumental music, Chris. I that's wrong, and it makes you annoy which is me. such a funny thing for someone who actively says that they never listen to vocals to say, I don't care what any this vocal ever has to say. Lyrics. But if you take them out of my song, I will riot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. I mean, it's true. I don't understand it either. You know, like I said, I yeah. love listening to music in other languages. So that mm-hmm. means to me, it's the meaning of the lyrics has. N- that right. has it's, no it's no impact like on me. Instrument. It's just the the thing that that you follow through the song. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to expand your mind to not just be able to listen to that. No, I don't. You seem to like guitar solos. I do. I do enjoy guitar solos, and listening to Metallica is. Open Only if my- they have somewhere to be. <laughs> well. It, uh, it definitely... Okay, I've, I'm on that boat too. Like a solo yeah. should probably go someplace, <laughs> but I like just yeah. the the mindless ripping that's on Death Magnetic too. I mean, I do, I do like a lot of the riffs. Like, just like show me a riff, awesome. It's just mm-hmm. too many of them that don't really have any relevance to anything in the song. Is when it gets tiresome. To oh, me. we're not talking about solos anymore we're talking about riffs riffs guitar solos i did not like any really any of the guitar solos on death magnetic at all i thought they were all the exact same thing and they were all just wheedly 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 this this to me felt like more like there were moments where he was playing along with the riff but just like two octaves higher which to me mean has more meaning to it like there's there's a reason for it to be doing what it's doing rather than just doing the wheedly wheedlies and so like i enjoyed this way more in terms of the soloing, I, solo I, thought, I thought the solo on the last one was, was very good. And mm-hmm. they were doing cool guitar riffs that were a little bit un Metallica y, which was neat to just have them go. Duh, 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 duh. Like, and that's part cool. where it was just bass and drums. Yeah, that was hey. awesome. Hey. Yeah, that was awesome. I, I agree 100%. I, see, it'd be cool to hear these with the full album treatment. <laughs> I, it, would it would be interesting to hear them sounding the way that Death Magnetic did. However, I still think that in some ways I, li- I prefer this. I would, I would not, Magnetic. and I think that you are correct in that. I think that you could say that the guitar tone is objectively better on these four songs that we just listened to. Mm-hmm. But I don't have any problem with the one with the I, with Death Magnetic. I can, yeah. I could go and say this is why people don't like it, but I don't actually have any problem right. with with it the and also sounds, i yeah. now and now going and listening back and a being between this and all nightmare long i am going to double down on the idea that they knew that they were gonna brick wall the bejesus out of it and that's why the guitars like sound like that and that's why the vocals sound like that yeah it could be because i think For that sure. they were just pre-compressing it they're like it's gonna get limited anyway so let's just you know do yeah. what we got to do so it can be crazy loud and maybe be listenable turns out haha it wasn't yeah Unless, and some people said in the comments about Death Magnetic, sure sounded great in my, you know, clapped out 96 Honda Accord, and like, I bet it did. Mm-hmm. And that's that's cool, like, and that's, yeah. everything sounds like crap in the car. Yeah. 
And so why not make it just loud and distorted so you can kind of hear what's going on? The thing that we, we, we kind of mentioned this earlier, but like when the, when that when Death Magnetic first came out, like I'm all the reputable sources got that album and reviewed it. And I don't know if very many of them mentioned compression. You know what I mean? That'd be funny people were just pretending movie. that they that it sounded good. Is what I it feel like, like people to me. don't. The overwhelming majority of people, especially when you, you know, even in the world of like music journalism, they don't know anything about it, what makes a song. No, sound they're worried does. about what the lyrics. That say. is so like, sad. How are you feeling when you wrote the lyrics to the song? Nobody knows. That's, no, nobody knows shit about audio. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, and that's it's what, just the way hey, it is. That's what we're here for. Go to school. Right. Audio engineers telling you why things sound the way they do. But not teaching you how to figure it out for yourself. That's our job. Well, we can only do that a little bit. I mean, come on. We can't break know. everything. On a, I can't. on a serious <laughs> note, the only way to know how to do it for yourself is to go do it. And oh, yeah. then to go do over it 10,000 times over, after over, that, over. and eventually you'll be able to figure out what yep. compression sounds like. Mm -hmm. I had a Make bunch of up. comments from students. I asked them a question. I said, what is one thing that you want to be able to do with audio, but you don't know how. Mm -hmm. And I was looking mm -hmm. for really specific things because I'm like, God, if I could, I'll just throw in a couple little tidbits and I'll like give Every these kids I love something. This. I love this question already. To, right? And like, I got some strange answers and some uneducated answers, which is fine for this. How to make a fat beat. There was some stuff that was like that, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Like, if you yeah. don't know, you don't know. But there was one that was like, I would, there was a couple that were like, I would like to be able to EQ things effectively, or I would like to just basically be able to mix and master something. And like, I, the only way to be able to get good at that is to go do it a Repetition. bajillion times. You gotta make a lake filled with garbage. You, you do. Yeah. And boy, the look that comes up on a 19-year-old kid's face that says, you want to go make something? You gotta go make 10 tons of trash first. And they're just like, <laughs> really? Do I have to make a masterpiece the first time I open up Fruity Loops? And it's just not gonna happen like that. We lost Chris Parker. Yep, but I agree with everything you're saying, for sure. There's an excellent book called The Dip that talks about the period of time after like when you first get into something and it's brand new and everything about everything you learn, the lowest hanging fruit is all very exciting. And then you spend an unbelievable amount of time only making trash and not doing anything you want and not, you can't figure out how to make what you want to make and everything you make is garbage. And then it's like, it talks about how to get through that and then back out the other side. <laughs> And it's the same thing with practicing an instrument or something too, right? Oh, for yeah. sure. Practicing an instrument. It's anything, really. And Chris, you've talked to you talked before about the donut analogy there where you mm -hmm. when you when you want to like something and so you you start to eat the donut and it tastes really good and the more you listen to it and learn about it, the more you start to understand it and then you get to the middle of the donut and it doesn't taste good anymore because there's nothing there because you understand it better. And then you keep going and you learn more and learn more and learn more and then you realize you understand it at a deeper level and you can start to enjoy it again. It just makes me think yeah, you start to appreciate to what you see other people do instead yeah. of just you lose the illusion because you know what is happening enough to see it. Like you see people do a thing that used to be magic and you're like, well, they just did this and this and this and this. But then later you get even further and you're back into the donut part. And you're, like, you're oh, like, oh, but the way that you did this, you did this little yeah, different thing. Exactly. Than the other guy exactly. Did it. But when you big dumb yeah. like me, it takes a long time to get to that point. It's <laughs> Donut big and far apart. Yes. Well, remember, remember the first day we had the first day you and I ever met each other when we were in class. The very first thing our professor said to us, Mr. Miller, said to us was, "Do you remember?" He said, "He said, how many of you are here because you like music?" Oh. And everyone oh, rose no. their hand, and he's like, "If you want to continue to like music." Get out of my class. Leave, <laughs> leave the program. Leave. Yep. And he's like, no, I'm serious. Now, we had really great instructors at the school we went to, and they pushed us really, 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 really hard when we were freshmen. And then and we, they were not our friends, and they were jerks to us the whole time, pretty much. And then when we got to be sophomores, we went grilled out with them all the time. They were the, our best buds because they realized we were there sticking it out with them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which I think is how that's one of the things I enjoyed about college so much was like that as approach to it. But like, yeah, that was the first thing that we were told on the very first day we were there was if you like music, you do not want to do this class. You do not want to start to learn it on a fundamental level and un start to understand it because you will not be able to enjoy it anymore. And See, I, I know that... so many people in the music industry that become jaded and never are able to enjoy anything again. And it's very then frustrating they're doing it wrong. to me. 
Because yeah, you just yeah. learn to enjoy different aspects of it after you learn more about it. Or seek out the things that you do like. There's definitely enough yeah. of it out there that you should be able to find something you appreciate. Mm-hmm. For sure. I think it might almost be worse if you were actually studying music instead of audio that's probably true definitely true because like yeah. once you figure that out and like once you hear i mean again it's the donut thing and blah 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 blah. i remember one of our instructors from where we went to school one of the music instructors talking about that and like him describing what he heard when he was listening to a composition and i was just like when he described what he was hearing I'm like, I, I remember having the thought of like, I don't want to know what you know, because mm-hmm. if it was that easy for me just to like break something down in a way, I kind of wish I had that skill. But like at the time I was like, uh, uh-uh. I want something to be magic yeah. and like let guitar mm-hmm. man do finger things that I think are magic. <laughs> and <laughs> just like... sure, sure. No, for sure. <laughs> but anyway. OK, so we are going to now shift gears a slightly. You guys were saying those sounded like demos. We're going to actually listen to the demos now. Just one or two songs. Um, we had a lot of comments saying you need to listen to Flamingo, which it was a, a temp name for the song that eventually became All Nightmare Long. Yep. So, Chris, do you have this song pulled up? Yep. Flamingo is track five on this like bonus disc thing. Mm-hmm. It's seven minutes and fifty nine seconds long. I don't remember how long. I'm gonna guess all nightmare long is six fifty four. That's my yeah, guess. I, don't, I think all nightmare. Long. Look it up. Hold on. While yeah, while we're I've got here, it right here. Okay, you look that up. While we're here, I just want to say, um, well, Chris, let me know when seven fifty seven. Okay, oh, so oh, very Jesus similar. Two oh. seconds longer. This one is. Okay, so do you guys, you, Chris? Do you have the the whole album pulled up here? Like looking at the titles of the songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it says like high guy and then 19, 19 oh, yeah. black squirrel Casper. Right. So I, I yeah. on the wiki page, it has it listed here. High guy is that was just your life. 19 is the end of the line. Black squirrel is broken, beat and scarred. Casper is the day that never comes. So I would be curious to listening to that. Flamingo is all nightmare long. German soup is cyanide. So they have all nightmare long and cyanide right one after the other like they do on the album. UN3 is Unforgiven 3. three. Jim Bag is The Judas Kiss. K2LU is Suicide and Redemption Instrumental. So it's the instrumental. And then 10 is My Apocalypse. Yeah, that's all in an album order. Oh, it is. Okay, that that makes sense Mm -hmm. that that's why they did that. Okay, let's just do Flamingo and see what this sounds like. I have no idea what this sounds like. I don't think either of you guys have ever heard this. Nope. All right, you ready? You ready, Chris? Three, two, one. Okay, that's the riff. A little more out of tune. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of like this kick drum sound more than on some of the stuff on. I'm really curious what this is gonna sound like. This is the song so far. Mm -hmm. Guitar tone's good. Yep. Big. Sounds great. It sounds better than the other one. Not perfectly timed. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. What is that different? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is now different. Going different directions, yeah. They changed this rep. Ooh. I don't mind the way it sounds that much. No, I think it sounds good. It's interesting how close it is. Yeah, it is the little that they just made little differences is really interesting. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, that part's just a little different. I love that you guys know this. I'm oh, just like, oh, this sounds song it, fifty thousand times. A thousand times, I love this song. Yeah, the rhythm oh, on that is different. And they don't—they're not putting any of that space in. Like it's such a hard transition normally. Yeah. Neat. Fun. Ooh. This is a different vibe. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh. Oh. 
Ooh, I love that. They should have kept that. What the? Oh, that's different. Ooh! This is sweet. I love how excited Chris is. I love this. You're freaking out and I love it. Completely different vibe. Yeah. This is like the major version to the minor of the original. Yeah. Love those dual vocals. Dude, maybe we should do this whole album. Not right now, but no. like. No. Not right now. <laughs> this is awesome, though. This is so much fun. God, the little changes in the riffs is crazy. Luck. Yes. Love this. I like. So far, most of what they did is an improvement, but not all of it. Ooh. Ooh. What does that remind me of? And then he rewrote so many lyrics and kept the same melody. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. Isn't this where he goes, something infamy, right? Yeah. Yep. Infamy! Yeah. Hallucination heresy! I love the double vocals. Drums this is such good. a different... Yeah? Well, it's a different song. It's so crazy. I love this guitar riff. It's it's yeah. very, it's the same thing basically in the other yeah, song. Yeah, this one's basically the same. It, this but there's one of that eighth This notes. feels the most incohesive part of the song. Oh, okay. And then I, the chorus of that song on the record is like so good. And then yes, the refining process is cool. That's cool to hear. Love that vocal thing though. Hmm. I don't know if there will be solos on this. There probably will be, but I don't know. Sounds like this. Oh. This is the same opening, at least, as the other one. Some part's different. Okay, so <laughs> here's the demo. They're just thinking rough, rough idea. A little improv, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they hit. Pretty close. And they go bop bop bada bop on the record, and this is bop 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 bop. Yep. Oh, okay. What did he change the words to here? Oh, different. Is it? Well, he, there's more lyrics in the transition. It com I think it comes. Oh, man, maybe. Yeah, this yeah, is there's cool. a bigger splat, bigger special uh, symbol there for sure. Mm, that's not as cool. I wonder if we're going to get the lyrics.
Ooh. Terrible. But he's trying. <laughs> he's trying, but man, that's bad. <laughs> Good on them for allowing this to be released. No breath in the demo. Not that Patrick's ever heard it. <laughs> I put it in the intro of the last video. I don't think anyone noticed oh. it. Man, that was cool, too. The luck runs out. Man, that's cool. Man. Is that the end of that? Yeah. Yeah. Man, huh. I love so much of that. It just hearing how it is. The final version is objectively a better song for sure. But there's so many things that they did where it's like, oh, does dual vocals are so good that Should've that was that. that was really cool and the the whispers that. that was centered left right yeah oh yeah uh, I that was that, that i love that cool. seeing that that to me that to me says that they did specifically make the choice to make it one vocal take the whole album right because i don't think there's any vocal overdubs on death magnetic not like that not there's like no that. harmony vocals there's no, no those harmonies were cool too. yeah yeah they were. but i think that do, do you I would assume maybe that it was just because they were like, no, we want to make a, a, a specific effort to go back to Master of Puppets and and Ride. There's very little overdubbing on those albums, so we'll keep it just simple. I don't know. I feel like in the instance where they're trying to go back to their older style, they're going to do it more in, in songwriting than they are in production style. Yeah. And I feel like because the vibe of that song is so much different in that version than the original. The original, or I guess the finished version, because the finished one is like, it's got, I think it fits the vibe of being called All Nightmare Long more. Like it has a darkness to it. Mm. And this is a little bit more like bar fight kind of, there's a certain upbeat vibe, I think a little more. Yeah. And you like on the chorus, you could tell that they were still figuring it out because like mm -hmm. the riff is basically there. The lyric changes are interesting, but like you read that thing in interviews that James figures out the melody and then writes the words and then like here's the evidence of that. That And then not only does he do that, he writes mm -hmm. nonsense words or sure. words that don't matter because the, the, the lyrics to the chorus were like, who cares? Right, right. And yeah. then and then. But it's the same melody. God, that was that's neat to listen to. And the little changes they made to some of those riffs was like. Yeah, I, how that's inter what's interesting to me as a band guy is that you would take the time to record this even that fully and then still go farm out the riffs because like I mm -hmm. if that was me doing that who sold tens of records in my life. <laughs> I would go and I would go have all those riffs farmed out before I even ever showed it to the band, probably. Right. And what like, do you mean by when you say farmed out? That you have the basic bones of the riffs and you can't figure out if you're going to go that, 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 or da, 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 between this, between like the little more melodic phrases right. and things like that. And like there's little riff moves in there that they definitely improved. But it's interesting to me that you would even go and make that full of a demo and then go back and be like, OK, guys, so remember that riff that I learned so that you guys all learned so well that we recorded it as a demo? Well, I changed all this stuff just this much and you'll never remember what we did. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I mean, mean that's, you, that's why think, I wouldn't do that like that. Because do you think all those guitars were done by James except for the solo? Oh, I didn't think about I wasn't thinking about that. No, I don't think that. OK, just curious. I, that was not my th I didn't like listen for that, but that was not my thought. I, you hmm. know, the thing that that made me think of that I thought was really interesting was whenever we would work on a Primal Waters album, when we would get to the point where we kind of had the song roughly out with drums and just guitars and then maybe one crappy line of bass or something in there, I would always listen to it and be like, this sounds so awesome. Like, this is so cool. And then we'd start working on it more and we'd start EQing stuff. And you have to start sacrificing little thing here, little thing there, little thing here, little thing there to make sure this other thing has 
is is f- being featured as much as it should. Then you record the vocals, and the vocals have to sit on top of everything. So you have to start compromising a little more here, a little more there, a little more here. And it would get to the point where I'm always like, this sounds way worse than we had the songs, <laughs> you know, like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And then you just keep working on it. You keep working on it. Keep working on it. And then slowly the songs start to get a little bit better every day. A little better, a little better, a little better, a little better. And then you're like, okay, this is all we can do. And you send it to mastering and then pray to God. And in the case of the last Primal Waters album, it comes back from mastering and you're like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever worked on. I can't believe it sounds as good as it does. But I've always thought that about the demos. Or or you would even, you show me a couple times demos for a different breed or whatever, some other metal bands around the area. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, this sounds so cool. And then I hear the fi- and then I hear the final version and it's like, what happened? You know, oh, what yeah, happened? I've had that happen. The demos always end up and I don't even necessarily want to say demo. I mean like the first rough mix. Like the roughest a, mix. Of, wait, 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 wait. A rough mix of the final recording or like a the, rough mix of like the final recordings. Oh. Wow. Before you start to do all those compromises, you know? There's so like that's just what this kind of made me think of that. I'm like, oh, I really like the way the guitars sound. I don't have too big of a problem with the way the drums sound. You can hear the bass in this. The vocals don't sound that bad. You there's some the vocal bass. overdubs. Like I can there's you know what I mean? Like two different examples I have of in my life that I'm aware of of bands that released an album like independently or whatever, and then later they got signed and then they re released it or mm. at least re released a bunch mm-hmm. of those songs on a different album and those changes were different and a lot of times not as good as the thing that they did originally. Interesting. Like that I think that could totally be if we were still doing music room, that would be an episode. A whole sure. episode, yeah. Like, what two? That made songs work. Which... Uh Spill Canvas and House of Heroes both had like Spill Canvas had an album called Sunsets and Car Crashes where they had one song specifically I can think of that has all these really cool drum fills in it. And then they got labeled and put out No Really I'm Fine, which is a fantastic album, but that the song, that version of that song on that album is just not nearly as interesting. Mm. And same with uh, House of Heroes had their self-titled debut album has a couple of different songs that went on to their next album when they got signed. And the newer version's just not as good. It doesn't have as many interesting riffs and de- you know departures and stuff. It's a much more like radio friendly kind of production. Oh, so like the per- like producer production lessened the impact of the song. Yeah, I think so. Not like, like not production. even you know it yeah. just yeah. I mean like just that somebody was like you know make this tighten this up, take this extra stuff out. Like it was kind of rewritten in a way that feels more you know, poppy, much more like radio Those drum fills friendly. interfere with the vocal line. Take them Those out. Drum fills yeah. interfere with our bottom line. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. And like, yeah, but I mean, that was not the case in this because like the changes no, no, that were not, made to the music and thing. the songwriting were good. Yeah. And, and, but like right for who knows and right Metallica, the budget for this demo is 10 times the budget of everything that I've ever done in my entire life combined. Right. And, and you know, it sounds like that, but like, I, I, I think it sounded good. Is that what your point was? Kind of. It does sound really great. I think it sounded great. I mean, the, the, in here's the, the grand scheme of things. It doesn't. But right. like for what I don't it think is, sounds better I, I don't know what you're talking about. See, I, I don't know what you're talking about because something no, tonight. because Metallica has albums that legitimately sound terrible. They never have. Re- they've only released two good oh, sounding I'd rather, albums. I'd rather listen to. I'd rather listen to the songs from Saint Anger being played like this, like yes. through this, than the way that that's they what I'm up, saying. The, the same for me. Same thing with Master Ride and Justice. If those songs sounded like this, but played the way they're played on those albums, it would sound a thousand times better. Yeah, I, oh, I mean, I'm so 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 to like for this, you can tell it's a demo because the playing was not like the solo was rough, and there was some really poorly timed kick and kicks and stuff in there. So like well, that that to me is the where the demo ness of this comes from. But sonically, I'm okay with the way almost everything sounded. It could have been EQ'd and stuck into st- everything could have been stuck together a little bit more with some glue. But like I think that almost sounds better than the five song, four songs we just listened to before. This. And isn't I was I, gonna say this? I think that this song sounded better than Beyond Magnetic, but 
was like, you know, from like a, a band, like a structural perspective, like with the mis, you know, the the funky sort of out of tune guitar Correct. thing that happened and yeah. the timing issues, like stuff like that. It's like those things in the sound of the other albums, like those make sense together because it was played better yeah. on the on Beyond Magnetic, but this sounded better. I agree. Uh, I don't see, necessarily think uh, the drums did, but I. I understand what you're saying, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed listening to that. I would probably not enjoy listening to that in the car, would be my guess, because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think that things would be, be very clear. Mm. But it is interesting to me as someone, and I know that the viewers at home don't have this experience, but Chris Parker and I have known Patrick Muslick for a long time. And I'm very surprised that Patrick is saying these things, because there are yes. so many things that, like, that, like, I heard things... I think it's fairly specifically that I can like go back to a memory that I have that Patrick said, Chris, you can't have that sound like that. You, we have to do this automation move or it's unacceptable that I heard huh. that not being happen. And, and like, huh. but it's, it, what's really interesting to me. And since we were talking about like going to school for audio, which you should do, if you're interested in this stuff, go to school, go play with their toys. You'll have two years or three years Unless or you however long you take. Then you don't need to you can still do it and you can go make sound design. If you don't have all the crap at home, you can go rent a place. Yeah. And also there are guys there that will, or whatever people there that will teach you, that will help you if you want it. Anyway, can't say enough good things about audio education, mm-hmm. but yep, I agree. It's interesting to me that especially Patrick is, is, I mean, listening. what did you hear that was so, I mean, I know it's the one, the, the, one, the one thing that I'm thinking of right now is those symbol hits that were just like from outer space. There was a, I, I think it was a China, and it was just like, and like it was like out of nowhere, and like. But the, we just listened to an entire fully produced Metallica album that had that sh- everywhere. No. Yeah, Saint Anger. Oh. Had that sh- everywhere. Okay. And then we also heard a whole Metallica album that had no bass, and then we heard a whole two whole Metallica albums where everything was drenched in reverb. Every Metallica album the, sounds the like rig- garbage in certain ways, and all I'm saying is like collectively, this stuff we've oh, just I heard know, sounds know. better than that. I'm stuff. just, I'm just, I, I guess it's it's interesting to me that so many, yeah. like there are grade one, page one, like album production things that you can't do, and then especially that you are so like production minded, and I know that you and like people accuse Patrick of this in the comments, and they are absolutely right, Patrick a lot of times does not hear the songs and only hears the production. And it's shocking to me that you can listen to something that's like this close to directly off the mics. And I just think that my, see, but what now, now this makes me think too about, about ride the lightning and master puppets in the reverb and that kind of thing. Number one, I think that that's sort of a product of the time that it was in 100%. But I think that what they were doing and they just did it wrong because the world had not made enough aggressive music albums at that point, mm-hmm. especially not enough ones that were going to be as popular as those ones were to realize to go from the demo stage, like from what we just listened to and also the Beyond Magnetic thing, to go from that to a fully produced high budget album. They didn't know the moves to, or they didn't know how to make the moves more better right okay so hold on wait no i'm so glad you said that okay we're gonna do something now and chris i don't know how to explain this to you i've been wanting to do this for a while so chris go to spotify chris parker go go to spotify we're gonna find one of the demos from master of puppets and we're gonna just we're not this the whole song or whatever but we're gonna listen to it and we're going to see what a demo from Master of Puppets sounds like. Okay? Presumably this is on the remaster. Set. Yeah, there's there's going to be two versions of it. One that has like 50, 127 songs and one that has eight. Go to the one that has mm-hmm. 127 songs. Sure. Mm-hmm. Which one do we want? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm trying to get there. I'm sorry, my whole my computer's slow. You know that. I'm sure our oh, frame sure. rate. I'm sure our frame rate right now is just going ba- 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 going ba- ham. <laughs> Okay, so let's. It's not bad. Resolution's down, but frame rates. Okay. We're going to uh, Master of Puppets. Shoot, it doesn't say Master of Puppets Remastered. Deluxe. Remastered Deluxe box set. Mm-hmm. All right, so disc one is everything. Okay, so disc two, there's some live stuff. Disc three is 
work in progress rough mix from 1985. Which is in the Master of Puppets or Sh- or Battery. Should we do, let's do Master of Puppets. Okay, so Chris, we're on disc 3, track 2. Which track? Track oh 2. That's all right. I'm here. Okay. All right, I'm going to hit play now and you probably wait like maybe 5 seconds and then hit play. Okay, I'm okay. hitting play. It's starting right. Now. That's bleak. <laughs> the base. There's a lot of reverb on this. It's all reverb. Well, hold on. Let's listen to it for a sec. Bass sounds awesome. I haven't listened to this yet, so I'm not trying to prove any point or anything. I'm just... I thought I thought maybe the demos would be... I'm surprised this sounds as good as it does. Drier. Like, this sounds just like the album. It, it is the album. It's just a mix. I think the bass sounds awesome. I like the way this sounds. I like the way the album sounds. I think the snare sounds different. It's a little boxy? I think, yeah. Doom. Boom. What? What's different there? There's no And it's not there. Huh. Are there maybe no vocals on this? I think no, we might not be it wouldn't be here yet. Oh yeah, there would be. There's no vocals. Right to passion play. Oh, so there's no lead guitars either, which is why that guitar thing's not in there. Right? Huh. Yep. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Maybe there's something different. Listen to the... Kirk's riff tapes. Let's listen to That's James' riff tapes. That's a minute 40. Chris, we're going to just do some listening here. I'm sorry you can't join us with this. We're going down to ma- disc four, Master of Puppets, 1985, from James Rift Tapes. Yep, I'm on it. It's only a minute 40 seconds long. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, this is the best part of this song, anyway. Oh, let's listen to this one. Dude, there's a 12-minute version here. Yeah, but it's probably that's it's just talking. cuts and stuff, yeah. The mid-June 1985 demo, I think, is probably what you're looking this for. This one? Yeah, let's listen to that one. All right, Chris, Parker, we're going to go down to the very bottom of disc four. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, wait, hold on. There's first, there's first demo here. Late-June demo. So we're going to go to Master of Puppets mid-June 1985 demo. It's 8.44. Okay. Do you yep. see? Do you see that? Yep, I'm on it. All right, we're going to that right now. That was interesting to hear, though. It was very similar. It was wanky solo. Oh yeah, that's demo material. <laughs> Mono. There are parts about the playing of that riff that I like better on this than I do on the album. Really? The way some of those things are accented, I really like. Do you think maybe they recorded this with like a cassette or something? This is what it sounds like. In 2023, what you do is you put your phone up on top of an amp and do a voice memo, and that's a this sound. This is a practice space with one microphone. Okay. Like that's what, and it's maybe maybe two. And it's just James and Lars. Yeah. Do 
So that's the mid-June demo. Now I'm going to click on the late June demo in disk, on disk 5. Uh, late June. Master of Puppets, late June 1985 uh, demo, 8-18. Oh, yeah, there it is. Back to stereo. Faster. Is it? Oh, yeah. I guess it is. Riff's different. Is that the opposite notice being accent? And is this James on the right? That's weird. And hi hat sort of insinuated on the left. Isn't that bass just coming in like a there's a truck rolling by outside? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. What? That the, was the guitar part the, that was da, 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 Yeah. Oh gosh. Look, there's Ride the Lightning stuff on here. That's what he sounded like on Kill Kill 'em All. Yeah. Whoa! You Oh, they changed that line. I like Dude, this is so kill them all. The final line's better. That's weird. Because he didn't sing that way on... on Ride. Really. Oh. You know what I mean? This is yeah. two albums later. Yeah, I didn't think about that. So God, there's eight discs of this. This vocal sounds so 80s. Yeah. Now I'm going to play a clip of Master of Puppets from the album. Okay. From the remastered version. Yeah. Ah, stereo guitars. Hard stereo. Yeah. Really dry. The bass sounds good. Big and throaty and snare drum sounds bad. Kick sounds good. I don't know, the snare comes in, it's got, it's got a nice sharp snappiness to it. It's not all boxy. Oh there now it sounds good. Those first ones oh, were yeah, all yeah. were like all strainer and no head. Guitars are pretty woofy. You know, they got some woof to them. Could be EQ'd out a little bit, but then they'd sound like the guitars from Death Magnetic. I don't remember the bass sounding like this. This bass sounds great. It might be a remastered version. It is the remastered version. Like, it, that might be why. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But isn't this the version that we listened to when yes. we... Yeah. I just didn't remember... Oh, I see. Yeah, I was like, Kick drum sounds like ass. Just, it's just put, 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 put. It's just a, a lone thud. But it's got enough definition that you can hear the doubles too. So yeah, I think that that's can probably we, why we, it sounds. Listen like to that. this. What do you think sounds better, this or whatever this is? This? Yeah, way better. That's my point. No, like, that's it's, it's, not... It's not as good, but it sounds better. Sorry, Chris. We're listening now. We're listening to German. Soup. We're just skipping around. Yeah. I, I there are. Why do I think that? Because the drums sound better. That's. We just listened to a lot of stuff there, so 
Thanks for bearing with us, everybody. Chris, thank you. I know you couldn't hear some of that stuff, so I'm or pretty much all of what we were listening to exactly. Thank you very much for following along as much as you this could. This will be fun to live chat with. It was just us skipping around. Yeah, well, this was very... This, this That, for whatever reason, will get us like blocked worldwide. And I'll have to cut that, <laughs> cut that whole section out of the video. Whatever. But that's, I mean... Yeah. If you want to know what it's like just to hang out with us when we're just sitting around behind studio monitors mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and listening uh-huh. to stuff, that is exactly what it's like. That is exactly so, what yeah, it's like. Here, listen to this. No, time. but does this sound better than this? I don't know. You got to A-B it faster. You yep. got you to gotta download that. You can't use it on the streaming. You can't listen to streaming stuff. You have to That's get it all, get it all, file. Get it 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 all on lossless. Waves and get it into Pro Tools. Or if anybody wants to, to hear me on a podcast talk about that very experience. <laughs> Listen to the one of the more recent, the second most recent episode of Sound Business with the Crash the Car. That's right. Yes, I started listening to that when you sent me a, a link. I think right. You oh, sent nice. me a link. Yeah, I didn't. I did. Yeah. I think you mm-hmm. sent me a link, and I started listening to it. And I was like, I don't have time for this right now, and then I forgot about it. So send me a link again. I understand. Well. Send okay. me send me a link, and I'll put it in the description of the video. I will. I'll do that. Now I, I want to point out to everybody. Last in the Death Magnetic video, I did put a link to Chris's band with, that you're in now, which is called what. Fast News Rex. I put a link to their disc golf metal music video, and I put a link to a trailer from Chris's uh, Chris Parker's uh, video mm-hmm. game that's yeah. coming out. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. If, if you didn't realize that those links were in the description for Death Magnetic, go back and watch that, and you can check out what Chris's metal band now sounds like. Are you checking to see how many views the video has? I'm just checking to see if any of you wonderful people left, left a comment. Comments. That would be great. I hope I hope you guys didn't. And if you or I hope you guys did. And if you didn't, go do that. Well, anyway, uh, I I think that was good enough for a video, right? You guys, two, we can end it now, and it'd be less than two and a half hours long. That's fantastic. I can get the rest of my night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris, you got. I'm good. To say? Oh sh! It's like midnight. I gotta go home. I got mm-hmm. stuff I got to do. There's day tomorrow. T- t- we're in today. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Uh, everybody stay tuned to the channel for more uh, Metallica news. I'll post updates when we're getting ready to record Lulu or Hardwired or whatever we decide to do. Um, we are all we are going to record the Slayer, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, uh, the other bands. Probably the ones that I <laughs> Megadeth and <laughs> Megadeth and and Pantera, the two that people want to see the most, are the two I forget every time. We're gonna get to that stuff eventually, so just be patient with us. I can only do so much at a time, and then when we record a video like this, it takes me like a couple days to edit it. Got to render the son of a gun, all this stuff. So, thank you very much for sticking with us for this video, though. It was really fun. I really love doing this, like clicking around stuff. Hopefully, all that can stay in, mm-hmm. and I don't have to edit it out. But that was really fun. I myself personally am going to burn myself a day of these files that I have and I'm going to listen to Demo Magnetic. I think I'm going to listen to that. Maybe I'll even like it more than I want to listen Magnetic. to I'll probably listen to it as well too. I think yeah. it's that was a lot of fun, and I want to yeah. hear the rest of it. I wish like we could have listened to more of it with you guys because you were really freaking out. Went, like, oh, that riff was a little different. That was really mm-hmm. fun. That was really fun for me I to see. I think that I might only have that experience with that with that song because you liked it so much. For sure, for sure. I'm excited. I, think I could probably do that with all of them. I know them. I've been really been through this album yeah. a million. I'm ex- times. I'm excited to listen to the. When I went back and edited the video, the, that one song, The Day That Never Comes, I think mm-hmm. that song really stuck out to me as probably being my favorite song on the album. So um, I'm excited to hear the demo of that that song. So, Oh, wait, maybe not. All Nightmare Long was good, too, and Cyanide was good, too, so maybe that would be the third one. So mm-hmm. There we go. Anyway, thank you very much <laughs> for watching. Thank you for being in the chat this whole time if we did do the premiere. Thank you very much for being around, and we will see you guys next time.